I, I need to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Rika Meyer, and I hold um, an interesting job at Rio. We've kind of reformatted a uh, few things. And what I do is marketing, recruitment, alumni, and development. And that's a lot rolled into one. And I think that the way that I'm seeing this job is more of a collaborative effort and working with teams of people to do all of these things everywhere. So this is not me, this is you and our staff and our parents and our um, community. So I'm a communicator. Um, I'm, not, I'm not the person who's um, doing all the details, but I, I can communicate. And I did not go to Rio, but I've been here for 10 years now. Um, I've been a dean's wife and I've been a teacher here and I've worked with marketing here at Rio and Rio just has a huge piece of my heart. You guys know that if you were with us through the fires, you know that we had some fears. We thought our school might be in danger and we're so grateful that it's still here and serves a purpose for um, our kids and our future of Adventist education. Um, I'm going to pass it on to our principal, Mr. Vic Anderson, who in April is going to celebrate his 50th year reunion at Rio. Um, so Vic, just start us off and tell us why we're all here. Go ahead and unmute yourself. First, I want to thank all of you uh, for being here and, and showing support for Rio Endo. Um, secondly, I just want to say that, um, Randall, this is probably the first time that I've been able to talk without you interrupting me for several years, but I appreciate you being here. Um, we have um, a, quite a bit to show you this evening, and basically our job is to try to um, explain what's going on at Rio Lindo and also to try to en enlist your support, um, which we believe that we're going to need um, as, as we move into the future. Um, if you're like me, um, you graduated from Rio Lindo um, and you at some point, um, hopefully not too long after you left, realized that Rio Lindo had given you an incredible start in life. Um, we didn't always enjoy um, how Rio Lindo was operated or all the rules and regulations and everything. But um, what we have found as we've gone through life close friends everywhere um, has, has been wonderful. So um, I'm excited um, about you being here and I'm glad that um, we're going to get the opportunity to hopefully get an alumni association organized in a way that it can effectively support the school that we all um, know and love. Um, our mission, as, as you can see on, on the on the screen is that we want to bring Christ to every one of the students that comes here. Um, while they are learning, while they're learning things that they need um, to be successful in the academic realm in the future, but also um, in the spiritual world and uh, through serving other people, uh, we want them especially uh, to uh, meet Jesus while they're here on campus. Um, and that's uh, always been a major part of the Rio Lindo experience, and, I'm, and we're, we're working hard to continue to, to make that a part of what we do here. Um, our vision is that our students will continue to grow um, spiritually, socially, physically, um, and academically so that they can become independent contributing members of society. Overall, our, our largest goal is that when our students leave here, they're going to be capable of serving the world um, and leading others in a way that makes our world a better place. So I'm gonna pass it, I think I'm supposed to pass it back to Rika at this point, and I'll let you go ahead and talk about um, Rio as it used to be. Yeah, you guys all recognize this scene walking in front of the um, ad building on your way to class or to get to the cafeteria. That's still how it operates today. Um, let's just take a walk down memory lane and see how we came to be. I, I love this top right hand corner photo because um, if you remember, there's actually a pool now in between 
uh, <laughs> the tennis courts and the gym. So Rio opened in 1962 and it was built as the premier school for Northern California Conference. Um, this, it was state of the art. We had the, just the most incredible facility with um, a school gym and classrooms and the latest technology in our industrial arts program. Um, all the debt was paid off for the school buildings by 1969. And um, we started an art program in the 70s with Clinton Conley. He was a glass artist who did the stained glass windows in this church, very talented individual who stayed on for a couple decades. And then in the 80s, we built our church in the new church building. And, um, and enrollment was high. We had a lot of students here. If you were here in the 80s, um, 70s, 60s, you know that there were a lot of students. By the way, I just want to take a second and see where you guys are coming from. And let's just do a quick little roll call in the chat box. So if you are here, raise your hand and tell us your name and um, your maiden name and what year you graduated. So go ahead and put that in the chat right now. I'm, I'm curious for who, who all is here. And if you're on Facebook, let us know in our Facebook comments too. So things are going really great at Rio. Um, we had students from all over Northern California. Around the middle of the 70s to early 80s, we started getting international students. And that was a fun opportunity for our students to meet students from all over the world. And in 1989, this was a new uh, piece of trivia I learned recently. Rio's mascot became the Spartans and varsity athletic program launched. And if you've been at Rio recently, you know that we are a very physically active school. Kids are really involved in sports and intramurals. And um, I love these pictures. These are so fun. Um, a lot of time on the lawn spent doing rope poles down by the river. Um, Sabbath morning breakfast with cinnamon rolls in the dormitories. Those are all snapshots that you guys told me about in your surveys when I sent it out. Uh, in the 90s, we had more international travel with the launching of our Europe trip with Mr. Yingling. Um, and then in the mid to late 90s, there started to become a lot more K-12 Adventist schools that were raised around the conference. And um, in part, because of that, Rio voted to allow day students to attend school for the first time. For a lot of you, it was dorm only. And then in the late 90s, we started accepting day students. In 2003, the Commonweal Foundation began to infuse money into a lot of Adventist academies, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars, adding up to millions of dollars over the last 20 years through its Pathways program. And this enabled a lot of students from lower income houses to be able to attend Rio. Um, and an update on that program is it, it was actually phased out about three years ago. Um, so that helped enrollment in the early 2000s. Um, in 2010, Rio started to undergo a school improvement process under our previous principal, Doug Schmidt, um, and improved with teaching, with getting uh, teachers together and collaborating and improving a lot of aspects of our school program, specifically in the classroom, more of a collaborative learning model. Um, we did more standards-based grading and learning, which um, we're doing some, but not all. And then in 2013, I don't know if any of you guys were here for this, we celebrated our 50, our first 50 year reunion here at Rio. And it was pretty special. We had um, Mr. Galusha who helped design and build the school here on staff. We had some original teachers. Uh, we had a huge um, turning in of class, classmates from the first class of 1963 come back for their first 50 year reunion. And um, that was just a really notable year. I just want to see who's here. Cheryl Sutton, 1974, Don Krause, 1971, Jenny Spoo Crane, Glenda Meadows, 1972. Um, I hope my mom is on here. She's Eileen Benson from class of 73. I don't see her, maybe she didn't get in. Some people weren't able to get in, so we're still emailing out links to get, get them in here. Um, do we have Facebook? raising their hands and people on Facebookers. So we have a lot of 70s representation. Look at that, Abigail and Andrea Clary. I remember both of you back in 2012, 2013. Um, a couple notable things I wanted to say. The largest family to send children to Rio was the Martin family of Ukiah, who sent all eight of their kids here in the, 
uh, in the 90s and 2000s. And we graduated our first third generation graduate in 2015, and that was Matthew Salvini, if you recognize the Salvini name. And um, let's see, we've made a lot of additions to our campus over the years that we'll talk about in a little bit. But <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm so glad to see all of you here. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit of our enrollment over time, because I know if you've come back and visited, you've walked through the halls and you've said, oh, wow, there's a lot fewer students here. And there was a huge boom in Adventist education in the 60s and 70s. So much loyalty to Adventist education. And you've probably seen a similar trend at other Adventist academies where in the 80s, you know, it sloped down a little bit, but in the 90s, it really began to decrease. And for Rio, it went, our enrollment decreased quite a bit in this red box when um, a lot of our Northern California schools raised their level to 12, to go from 10 grades to 12 grades. Um, because the boarding school model, a lot of students came here, maybe this was your case, their junior and senior year. I know that was the case for my mom and myself when I attended boarding school in, um, in California, not this one, sad, sad to say. Um, so you'll see that there's quite a major decrease in enrollment. And then we've really had quite a steady enrollment for the past 20 years around 160. And it's slowly been declining recently. And we're looking into that to figure out what, what are the contributing factors here. And there's just a lot of questions there that we're looking at. I think another interesting um, aspect of our program is ethnicity or race or background over time. And this is just since 2004, 2005. So I don't have the data to go back further than that. So this is what I'll show you right now. Um, you can see that over time, our racial groups, and it's a lot more complicated than just the five that are shown here, but a lot of, a lot of these intersected over time. And now today we don't really have a majority of a race or a people group here. We have a lot of first gen, second generation immigrant families. We have a lot of cultures represented here. I think over half of our students grew up in a home where English was the second language. So we've been doing a lot of increasing in our um, writing and speaking in the classroom and really preparing them to get ready for um, for university life. So this was an interesting dynamic that I wanted to show you. Um, Becky, do you mind emailing Brad Benson? We want him in here and he's having trouble getting in. Gonna just text Becky really quick. Um, retention over time, this is, this is an indicator, I think, of a freshman to seniors experience and how loyal they will be as a graduate. So although this has a lot of hills and valleys over time, you can see a major growth of retention of retaining our freshmen. And I think recently we actually had the highest retention rate ever in the history of Rio with our freshmen. So that's an indicator of the health of our program and, um, and sorry, I have to send a text to Becky really quick. We need Brad Benson in here. We're coming for you, Brad. He's gonna have some things to add, I'm sure. Brad, by the way, if, if you've seen, he retired recently. He's living the dream out in Tennessee with his grandkids and um, he's still very involved in Rio and comes to some of our meetings and um, we're happy to have him. He was our alumni director for many years and um, he's just done a lot for the school. Um, a lot of people come to us and say, time is different. It's everything is different here. We used to make so much more and tuition was so much cheaper back in the sixties and seventies. And I thought it would be cool to just lay this out for us once and for all and see exactly what the tuition versus your versus the median U S household income is. Um, what I want you to see is that we've really stayed around the 20% rate for all of these years, we haven't really deviated from that. Um, what this tells me is that we've stayed with inflation. And although it's a much more difficult thing to buy a house today than it was 50 years ago, um, our education prices haven't gone through the roof. So I know that that's a misconception that a lot of people have. And um, if you would like to stare at this longer, you're welcome to, but I'm gonna start a poll because I wanna get you guys 
um, engage in here. And I'm going to throw it over to Connie, who's a graduate from 1979, and she's going to talk to us about what this poll is. Hey, guys. Um, so I, uh, I was here in 79. I was actually a four year student and really enjoyed my time here at Rio. And uh, we've got a fun thing going here with a poll that we're going to be asking you questions about things that you remembered about Rio. So it's really easy that's going to pop up and then you just choose uh, what you like. This first question is, what was your favorite cat food? Um, and for me, my first thing was going to say the Sabbath morning cinnamon rolls. Really liked that. They had like these coconut ones that I loved a lot. But the other thing was, I remember banquets during that time, during the 70s, they'd have, um, one of my favorite things is they did um, like this fake turkey thing and they formed it in the sh shape of a turkey. And I don't know if anybody remembers that, but that was a lot of fun to do that. So you're gonna see this popping up, um, mark your favorite one, and then we're gonna be able to see, take a pull uh, tally right away and uh, see what some of the fun things that we enjoyed about Rio. All right, I'll give you guys just a few more seconds to make your votes. We have a lot of votes for cinnamon rolls. Haystacks, a close second. <laughs> um, and we'll do another question in just a minute. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the difference in the similarities between Rio before and Rio now. And I think that the educational philosophy is still really the same. We are about whole person education. We're not just about the academics, but we're about the life experience. And a lot of you who wrote to me in these surveys said that you develop lifelong friendships with peers and that you had this sense of independence and compassion for people around you. And we are still really intentional about creating space for those students today. Um, our boarding school experience goes beyond the classroom. Learning takes place in the dorms, the basketball court, the cafeteria, on trips. By developing lifelong relationships with peers and staff, our graduates grow in compassion, inclusion, discipline, and their own walks with God. I'm going to pass it to our vice principal, Kevin Hardesty, who's also our athletic director. And I'm going to end this poll, and we're going to throw another question up in just a second. Um, Here's the results, if you can see. So Kevin, I'll throw it to you and you can take it away. Hey guys, how are you doing? Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Kevin and I've been at Rio for 10 years. Rika and I actually came the same time um, and we haven't left. We've been working together, throwing back ideas back and forth for a long time. So uh, it's a great place. I'm originally from Southern California and I, I didn't know so much about becoming a Northern California resident. Um, and I fell in love with it. And it's mainly because of the campus. Um, I get teased a lot by the staff there that I don't ever leave the campus. Uh, if I, I, I probably leave the campus on my feet and my bike more so than I, than I do in my car. Um, and it's just because the campus there is so awesome. And, I, and that's the reason, one of the reasons why I took a job there. And that's definitely one of the reasons why I'm, stay, I'm staying there. So, um, just want to let you guys know, even though I'm not a alumni of Rio, I feel like it is home. So we're going to give you a quick snapshot of where our students are coming from these days. Um, the majority of our students are coming from the Northern California Conference. Uh, within roughly two hours of the school is the highest predominant amount of students able to come and go on weekends if they want. Um, and then we have another rough 12% that are coming from California, Southern California, and then 9% that come from outside the state. And we do have 16% international student rate right now. So we've, we've had it up to close to 30%. And you'll see in some future slides, we've had it up to close to 30% of international students. So you'll see right here, you can see in like uh, mid 2000, 2010, 2015, somewhere in there, the mid 2010s, 2010s, we had um, close to 30% international students compared to the US students. And then uh, the school, roughly 2015, 2016, we started making an intentional choice of acceptance, acceptance of international students um, and the program we are providing. And so you can see that we've kind of had a decline in uh, international students where we're getting to closer to 
uh, 20% is kind of where we would like to see our school at 20, 25% is, is a good percentage where we feel is a good mix for the international students and for our US students that they can have a great experience of learning culture and then learning the American culture as well. So you can see um, that in the percentage of, of where we're at. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, here's the dorm versus village. So like Rico was saying, it was the late nineties when we were allowed to, or not when we allowed, when we decided to uh, have village students. Um, and you can see in here, we have a, a rise in village students, especially in these last two or three years. So um, three years ago, man, there's just too many fires. They all kind of blend together. But I think three years ago, 2017, um, the Tubbs fire came through Santa Rosa, started I think in Calistoga and kind of came down through petrified forest into towards um, Redwood Adams Academy and that actually burned their school down. And for the rest of that year, Redwood's high school students came onto Rio's campus and assimilated with our students, but kept their program the same. We kind of shared some into it would join a PE class, a videography class. We would kind of kind of get this interaction going. Um, and by the end of that year, a lot of the students were saying, the Redwood students were saying, let's just try to combine it. Like, yes, we don't have a school here, but let's just figure out what we want to do and try to combine it. So from that next year, uh, Redwood made a decision to suspend their high school program. And so most of the students that we have now that are built came from Redwood Adventist Academy. And so we're developing a connection um, between the two schools. And so that's something as, as a, a younger generation staff member here, we really like to see because our students have always gotten along really well. And for us to be able to continue a relationship with them is really good. Here's another graph um, that you can see what kind of students, where their students are coming from besides physical location. Are they coming from public school? And if you look, uh, see earlier, early in the, two, the last 10 years, we got a lot from the public school system and we've slowly started to even out um, as far as coming from a local Seventh-day Adventist school compared to a local public school, as well as coming from a, another private school education. So you can kind of see that there. Um, we've always had a pretty low number of, of homeschoolers, but that's just generally because there's not a whole lot of students homeschooling. I think that might change um, hit or miss because we've heard both. We've heard some parents like having students home and being able to control. And we've also um, heard that, that students, parents are ready for their students to go back and let us teachers guide them. The academic program at Rio is we've had several, we have three different types of diplomas. So we have the general, a college prep and honors diploma. And one of the things we've really made a push for the last several years um, on registration day is when students come here, a general diploma does not mean you cannot go, you cannot attend a college afterwards. It just means that you might be able to get into a more basic college, whereas a UC school is which we um, generate our college prep diploma for. So if you meet the requirements for the college prep diploma, you then can be, you can be accepted into a UC school. So University of California school, uh, our state. And we do offer an honors um, diploma that just makes you have to take the honors classes. So you can get a college prep without taking honors classes. The honors classes, um, we offer honors classes in English and history, junior and senior year. And you can also take the AP class if you want to. So we gear that in calculus, in English, history, and even in Spanish, we let them take the AP classes. Um, the other thing that's really nice about that is a lot of students wanna to try to get that above the 4.0. And this year we had, um, even online, we've had a ton of students, I think the junior class had eight students receive of over a 4.0. And so when you're in those honors classes, you're, you're graded on a different system. Um, three years ago, our school counselor, Renee Brashington, brought in a, a peer men brought either brought in or brought back a peer mentoring program and tutoring program. And so we have high achieving academic students getting work hours um, to meet with them during a study hall class, study hall time, and get together as group sessions, group study halls for the students that are struggling academically. Um, thanks, Rika. So the next slide we're going to talk about is the trips and tours we're here. So um, Mr. Yingling um, 
when he came in the early 90s, he started the Europe trip. And so we alternate the Europe trip every other year. So we would do a Europe trip one year, following the next year with an international mission trip. Um, and so Mrs. Uh, Mr. Ealing would take the students to different countries and he would kind of go through like a five or six rotation, which gets us like 10 to 12 years of different countries and groups. Um, and he had just, he's like probably bored of them because he's got to the same places, but he is like a great like guide. Like he knows all these things, the ins and outs of the little ones and figure out how to do that. So if any of you guys ever want to go uh, travel on yourselves, go to him first and just drop him an email. I actually did that when I did a back backpacking trip because there was one summer I want to do a backpacking trip with my wife. And he's like, oh, I was just here in Machu Picchu and we did this one and I booked two. So then I had to do another one over here. And so it was really cool. And we actually went on the exact same one that he did to his recommendations and it was really good. Um, but we do alternate that with a mission trip. And recently we've gone to Albania, Thailand, Peru, um, Cambodia. And then we did a local mission trip where we drove down to Southern California and we call it the Love Does mission trip. And we were reaching out to the student, uh, to people in our country and going driving down and set up a, a path all the way down through that. Um, the biology students go to Albion. And if you talk to students today, this is one of their favorite trips. Um, Mr. Riddle was the bus driver for this. Um, and so he would drive the whole student body out there, the whole sophomore class out there and stay out there. And then when he moved on from the job, I was like requesting to drive this trip, you know, um, it is not very often to get bus drivers to request to drive trips, but I would love to go out there and the students love it. It's so fun because it's a bonding time. We worship out there. We study, they work really hard on identifying their sea creatures in the new um, Albion field station. Like they have this library. They've done a really good job in that. And that's a highlight for the students that have been here throughout their time. So, um, and then every year the students are required, every year they're at Rio or an Adventist school, um, they do, we do require 25 hours of community service. And we plan special community service days around um, us being able to go out there and help the community. And so you can see a picture there that was us kind of cleaning up Rio's campus or Redwood's campus after um, the Tubbs fire. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention on that last slide is we do, we do music tours. And so we have a music tour every year, kind of on that alternating plan where they do like a, a trip that is drivable, Southern California, um, Las Vegas, somewhere in there where we do a driving trip with, via bus. And then the other year we alternate into a long distance one. We were supposed to go to Hawaii last year. We didn't end up doing that with, um, with, with the shutdowns happening. But in recent years, we've gone to Chicago, Houston, um, Seattle. So that's been some fun ones. And so our music program is really cool. And besides, besides all of those, we still do our local trips. We do an overnight trip to the Northern California Conference. So we'll be out coming, going into a tr trip to Eureka, Reading those areas and spending an overnight and then we try to get to seven or eight other schools just on a Saturday we'll drive down to um, Antioch or we'll drive to Petaluma and do one of those one of those services um, on a Saturday. The student life this is like like Rika said this is where the students learn. We have school, but the student life is where students really develop and who learn, figure out who they are and what they are. And this is the time that coaches, music teachers, uh, wood shop workers, our shop teachers, students that have hobbies really dive into learning what a student is all about and mentoring them. So we have athletics. We've have, we have intramurals. So outside of athletics, we have school-wide intramurals that used to be popular way back then. Well, we've brought those back and we've had 80% participation. We had one sport sign up um, when we had 150, 160 students here. We had 120 sign up to play in an intramural. And so that's just awesome to see them being active and wanting to be involved with the school. So that's always some really great things. Riga is going to throw a question out here on a poll or Connie is. <laughs> yeah, we have this dress code violation. Um, I remember when I was here, it seems, so I was here um, 76 through 79, but I remember we had to wear pantsuits, you couldn't wear jeans, and the tops had to be, I don't remember if it was wrist length or finger length, but um, it was a big deal. I think by my junior or senior year, we actually got to wear jeans 
in the cafeteria. So look through these, which dress code violation did you mostly get in trouble for? I'll leave it up for another minute, but Kevin, you can keep going. Oh, no, it's funny, uh, Rika, Becky and I were kind of looking through some of the older pictures and uh, we, we saw some like PE shorts or school mm -hmm. shorts that were, I was like, those would not be in dress code at Rio currently. So it was, it was interesting to see, but yeah. Um, our spiritual life, we, ha we have a new pastor. Jesse Malin came from us. He's from originally from the East Coast. He spent the last several years in Lodi and he's doing an awesome job. And this has been, this is a unique time to become a spirit, like to become the chaplain of Rio Lindo Adams Academy. Um, he can't really get to meet a lot of the students, but he's done an awesome job of just setting up activities for students, bonding with students. We do have a couple of students here on campus that are here to learn and he gets them together and, and they have some services. So it's pretty awesome to be able to see that, but then he is reaching out and providing op, um, spiritual opportunities for the students that are off campus and ways for them to join and interact, which is doing a really good job because a lot of students are missing that interact connect inter it being able to interact with each other. And he's doing a great job of facilitating that. Um, again, our, our um, community service programs has really been able to do this and we're excited like parent weekend traditions are still happening where the students are leading out and speaking. We have, um, we've re re revamped essay. Um, there's seven or eight essay members now. Two of them are specifically revolved around spiritual life um, on campus and in the church. So that's a real thing that has been added. All right, that might, I think, oh, this is, I think this is my last slide. So the work program, we don't, we don't have an industry anymore. So there's no more, hey, we can all go and do this or we're all doing laundry or we're going to the broom factory. We don't have that. Um, it's all of our work comes from on-campus um, jobs. So they're either janitors, they're readers, they're working grounds, maintenance. Um, we've established, established a freshman work crew where the, all the freshmen work together and they're cleaning the dorm. Then the other time they're out there, they're working with the grounds and they're kind of on this alternating basis there. Um, and recently we've been having some trouble with the child labor laws. If you're 15 years and younger, you cannot work until after three o'clock. And then you can only work a certain amount of per day. And so there's no flip schedules. It's all, it's a regular schedule. And we try to get the freshmen and sophomores in class and be able to have free periods in the afternoon. So then that means that, you know, three o'clock there, they have at least a couple hours where they can work. Um, and, and this is very essential because this helps pay for a lot of their scholarship and pay for their tuition. And they can make 25 to 4,000, $2,500 to $4,000 a year towards their school bill. All right, I'm going to throw it over to Mr. Anderson, Vic Anderson, and he's going to talk to you about um, our campus upgrades. But I wanted to throw another question up really quick. All right, Connie. Getting on social. I, I, think, I think that when we were here, you couldn't even hold hands. I think they can, yeah, I think it's even not hold hands. So if any of you ever got put on social or maybe there's places you went where you could uh, get away with things, I don't know. I don't think you'd ever do that, but look, look and see. We have, we have five people who don't even know what social is. That's how good of kids these guys were when they were at Rio. What's social? Connie, can you explain what social is? Um, being put on social means that you're being too friendly with your significant, uh, I guess, real boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, so I, I know there was different rules throughout the years, but uh, yeah, you couldn't hold hands or be, be caught smooching or being too close. So that's what being on social was, too friendly with your boyfriend or girlfriend. I've, I've heard of people getting put on social with their siblings before too. <laughs> that was a fun story to hear. All right, I, I'm gonna end this poll and um, Mr. Anderson, you can take it away. Okay. Um, so Real Endo is aging. When, when I was going to school here in 60s, 70s and um, 
even into the 80s, Rio Lindo was a, um, was a new facility and it was built out of brick and mortar and cement block and rebar. And, um, you know, it, it seemed indestructible. And it's true, the buildings are still standing, they're here. Um, the walls are great. The, the, the structurally, I think that, that Rio Lindo is gonna be here for a long time to come. However, um, infrastructure wise, there's been um, quite a bit of decay. And um, as those of you who are familiar with, uh, with construction and you know, how long things last, know that our steam tunnels are full of plumbing. Uh, a lot of it was metal pipe. Um, a, a lot of the uh, electrical conduit. Anyway, a lot of the stuff that we have is, is outdated and outmoded. And um, so we've kind of tried to embark at least on the beginnings of refurbishing Rio Lindo Academy. Um, one of the first things we did was um, in, in the lobby, and you can see the picture here, uh, the lobby hadn't changed uh, since I was here. So we basically started, and we aren't finished yet, but, but um, we started redoing the lobby, um, trying to settle down the pink cement block look a little bit anyway, and uh, make it a more inviting place um, and a, 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 just a better place for kids to hang out um, during the school day. Um, we've also uh, put in a gate uh, remote control gate out, out of, um, up where the old um, army style gate used to be when you came on campus. Um, in this day and age, controlling access to campus um, is very important. And we, um, we decided that that was one of the first things that we needed to do was get control of the campus during the day. We were starting to see more and more cars just driving around campus, looking at what was going on. Um, trucks, motorcycles, bicycles. Um, and we can't really, uh, it, again, because of all the problems that we've had with security at school, we couldn't really continue to allow that to happen. So we do have a new gate put in. Um, the picture on the right there is the athletic field. Um, you can see that we've improved it dramatically. Um, that uh, sod will be going in probably within, Kevin, I think it's two weeks first part of December. So at that point, instead of gopher holes, we will actually have an athletic field again. I'm pretty sure that it was the same grass that was there when I went to school here was still on our field. So I'm, I'm excited about um, getting rid of the gopher holes and actually having grass and also having control of access to our campus. Um, so the cafeteria there on the left, uh, it looks a lot like it did when back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, those of you who have been to school here more recently know that carpet was put in. And um, we were having a really difficult time keeping the carpet in the cafeteria clean. I saw food fights mentioned in, in um, one of your comments. Uh, and, and it honestly, that carpet was, um, not good and it was, certainly wasn't sanitary. So we pulled that out. We had to do some reconstruction on the floor underneath because there was some damage there. But uh, the cafeteria is now back to um, a floor that we believe we can keep clean and sanitary and, and it looks great. Over on the right hand side, you'll see another project that we did. Um, it's a solar panel array. Um, what, what we found is that one of our biggest expenses is utilities. And by putting this in, um, we'll eventually be saving the school over $150,000 to $200,000 a year in electrical costs. So we're, we're excited about that. It's going to take us six years um, before we see those large returns. But we're excited about having the solar panel, panels in, and, and they are producing. Um, Last year, at the beginning of the year, we had, um, I can't remember, oh, what's the name of that organization, Rika? Maranatha. Maranatha. Maranatha, I'm sorry. We had Maranatha come in, and they helped us refurbish some of the, the rooms in the boys' dorm, which, which definitely needed it. Um, down underneath that, uh, you can see an, an, another finished 
up above is what it used to look like, down below is the finished product. And so those rooms, I think we got through about eight of them in the boys' dorm. Obviously, we have a lot more work to do, but um, we, we did get make some progress there. Over in the right-hand side, you'll see uh, the girls' dorm kitchen, which was um, remodeled and actually looks great. And, then, and underneath that, you'll see the boys' dorm lobby, which our deans this year have been working hard on cleaning up and uh, painting. And you know, boys have a tendency to be a little bit rough on the place where they live. And the boys' dorm definitely needs more, more TLC than, than the girls' dorm. Um, what we're looking for tomorrow, and, and you know, we kind of wanted to give you a picture of where Rio is, um, but now we want to talk about where we're going and, and, how, and how we can use your help. Um, we're going to put an immediate emphasis on recruiting and marketing. Um, we're a school. Um, I know that that sounds um, obvious, but it's easy to get involved in a whole bunch of other things when, when you're a school and, and you're having financial issues. Um, but doing a, some analysis, what, what we found was that more students would definitely help fix our financial problems quicker than anything else. So one of Rika's jobs is re recruiting and marketing of uh, students. And we're really excited to have her um, do that. Um, we're also going to begin other revenue enhancing projects. Um, we have a committee, um, uh, that, a steering committee that's already put together that is um, beginning to analyze um, the facilities and the different things that Rio has, including our property here, and how best we can maximize um, financial returns from, from the assets that we have. Um, we haven't done anything with the, with the 300 acres that we have. We've tried several things over the years, including uh, some agriculture. None of that has worked out. So um, we're, we're looking at how, how we can maximize uh, what we have in order to support the students that we have because um, we are, just don't have enough students and they are not paying enough tuition to support the school and, and, and to actually keep it maintained the way it needs to be. One of the options that we're looking at is a possible trade school. Um, there, many high schools are actually going this direction. And so uh, since we have an incredible facility here with the shop and the, and the wood shop and the um, metalworking, um, we're going to be looking at that and also our auto tech program. So that's kind of an idea of where we're going and what we need to do. I think we're gonna have another question with Con. Yeah, so this one is, is it up there, Rika? Yeah, you should yeah. be able to see it. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one, how many years did you attend Rio? So um, see if there's any four-year students out there. All right, I wanted to introduce you to my friend, Alan Abbott. He has been involved with Rio for, I wanna say decades, Alan. I keep finding your name <laughs> and stuff as I go through Brad's office. Um, Alan graduated in the class of 1967. He's just a really good guy and he has a burning passion to see Rio make it. And he's he calls us all the time and gives us advice and his, shares his wisdom. I call him a lot, Alan, what do I do? Um, so I want him to share a little bit. This is one of the projects that's been underway that's been really alumni driven. So Alan, um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about this. Great, thank you so much. Uh, welcome classmates and alumni. It's great to have you in attendance tonight. Um, greetings from Oakdale, California, where I live. I was in the second four-year class uh, at Rio and I have been on the board active for a uh, little over 20 years, I think about 22 years. And back to the holding hand issue, our senior year, we were able to hold hands with our girlfriend uh, in the library Friday nights after Vespers for prayer bands. So the 
the library was full of couples. They thought we were enjoying praying. So it's just interesting how things change through the years. But uh, I've had a good life and Rio has, is still the best four years of my life. So I really do have a uh, love and a passion for what's going on there. Um, so I wanna give you a report on a, a recent development of an alumni advisory board. Um, the board had an awareness uh, of the abundance of talent that has flowed through Rio over the years. And so about four months ago, uh, we uh, developed a charter to create a two-way flow between the alumni advisory board and Rio's formal board, the school and the Northern California conference leadership. Uh, the initial alumni advisory board was identified and monthly Zoom gatherings established uh, with nine alumni uh, and seven from the Rio conference leadership team. Uh, the first meeting, Rio openly shared uh, the current status and the priority challenges to initiate questions, feedback, and suggestions. And a lot of that is the same information that has been shared with you uh, tonight. We just feel that we need to start sharing more with, uh, with uh, alumni what really is going on at Rio, more uh, in, in forums like this that we would not otherwise find maybe perhaps best to do in uh, monthly printed material or whatever, but we feel like we need to do a little bit of a deeper dive with some of the uh, strategic things that we're working on. And so this has really been great. So the outcome of that has been two priorities initiatives identified in focus groups currently being launched. Uh, and one is to formalize a very comprehensive alumni association, one that's very competitive with other schools. And then as Vic just described the uh, property assessment potential to identify opportunity to generate increased revenue. Uh, Rika Meyer is leading the alumni association development uh, and the uh, priority assessment uh, is being for property is being led, led by Vic Anderson, Albert Miller, Norm Bernhardt and former faculty Brad Benson. Um, as this is our initial launch uh, of an advisory council, we do not know what this is gonna look like in a few years. But the intent is to continually link and integrate alumni skills and talent to enhance the integration of such talent for the future success of Rio. I really believe strongly that all Rio will ever need to be successful is the um, talent and the gifting of alumni. Uh, we've got one of the best alumni, I think, of any school. And so it's really been a wonderful experience to get this advisory board launched and on its way. So I look forward to giving you updates in the future about uh, the success of this and uh, any changes that come as a result of it. So it is not a decision-making uh, advisory board, but they do make suggestions and, uh, and give advice uh, for the board to consider. And of course, final decisions are made uh, by Dr. Mark Woodson, our uh, chairperson uh, for the board. So it's got a very good structure, a very good reporting um, uh, journey to it. And we feel like, like it is really the, uh, uh, hopefully a very premier uh, group of alumni who can continue help us drive everything forward well. So that is my report on uh, what's new in that area. Thank you so much. All right, Connie, you want to tell us about this next question? All right, what best described you as a high school student at Rio? So we've got six different ones you can choose from. Um, the total jock, give me all the sports, the prankster, class clown, I was a good kid, never got in trouble and pulled straight A's. It sounds like that's what you guys all were. The preacher, involved in all the music, and I flew under the radar. So which one are you? Let's see what you guys can say. And go ahead and answer if you're on our face, if you're watching through Facebook, you can write in the comments um, what type of student you were um, as well. This is fun. We have quite a wide array of, um, of students. I'm A lot of people have been confessing their pranks to me recently. I don't know why, but <laughs> they've been telling me the the things that they never got caught for. 
Um, I'm not going to discipline you. You're, you're done. You're out of Rio. You don't need to tell us anymore. Um, I want to introduce you to my friend Charlotte now. Charlotte's been working with me. I've known her for a long time, ever since I was in high school. I went to Monterey Bay Academy and she's done a lot of work with them. Um, she is really the guru of Adventist Academy and Academy development and fundraising and alumni. And so she's been working with us as, in a consultant level, um, just helping us get get all of this off the ground. Everything that you're seeing, this is a whole team approach, like I said. So I asked her if she would tell us, like we're going straight to the sage herself, what does an alumni association look like? Just give us the overview, Charlotte. All right, well, I, and I apologize, my internet is going in and out, so hopefully we get through this. But, um, you know, the, the purpose of an alumni association is to preserve the memories of the academy and to um, welfare of the institution. So, um, you know, but it's a great asset to, to, to the economy. And you have to realize that the alumni are your product. Your alumni are what the end result of having an education at Rio Lindo. So, <clears throat> These are the people that, you know, uh, you want to, um, you know, recognize all of them in the world because. All right, I think I'm going to take over because Charlotte's kicked off again. She and I have worked a lot together, so I can kind of explain it. And she, she literally wrote the book on starting an alumni association. At Rio, I think that we've tried over the years to get something formal going on, and it never really has um, materialized for the long term. Um, Brad was really awesome at data and taking records. So we are tracking you guys, and we know what to do. And now we're ready to start putting some of this organization into practice. So what this means is the definition of an alumni association is any person who has attended Rio at any point, doesn't have to be a graduate. Um, any faculty member who has ever worked at Rio, you're also in the association. So you're already a part of it. Um, I want you to tell your friends that they're part of it, whether they wanna be or not. If they attended here, if they step foot on this campus as a student or a faculty, they are part of the association. Um, this year, I would love to create an alumni board. This is a group of between seven and nine people who can help with our alumni programs throughout the year. This is not me. This is you guys and your peers. Um, to serve on an alumni, alumni board, it would require about four meetings per year and then some work in between, um, getting in touch with people, finding, some, finding class organizers, planning for alumni weekend. Um, a, lot of, a lot of these things that we haven't really had help from the outside in the past. Um, now, Charlotte, if your internet is working again and you want <laughs> to jump back in, you're kind of cutting in and out. So I just- Yeah, oh, for sure. And I'm sorry, I, I thought it was gonna be good. So uh, I heard what you were just saying. And that's gone. I'm gone because I people start trying to believe that you haven't had an alumni association. I was quite surprised by that. So, but we're we're gonna get that all together so that the alumni very much be a part of um, you know what goes on at, at Rio um, because you're the greatest promoters. As the alumni, you're the great. You have the most say in what. You're... All right, yeah. So I'll finish what Charlotte was trying to say. You guys have the most say in representing our school, and we value you immensely. And so stay tuned in how we're going to communicate and how we're going to get this off the ground. Um, we're going to move. Mm -hmm forward to my friend Theodore. Hi, Theodore. He's joining us from the Northwest today. And I got in touch with Theodore this week because there is a Facebook group that's been functioning since 2011. 
And I had no idea that Theodore was one of the people who helped set this up. So um, he, you graduated in the class of 1988. Theodore, what kind of student were you when you were here at Rio? Um, <laughs> I was the, from actually from that um, poll, I was that under the radar kind of student, but I love sports. I did a lot of sports there. Um, I wound up on social because I had a girlfriend. Um, <laughs> Um, so all those things bring back memories. Yeah, I, I truly, and I worked in the industry because I was originally started the mill and then I wound up over on, the, I forget the other one where you made cabinets or something like that. So I really enjoyed my time there. But as you talked about the Facebook group, um, so I'll give you the background so you understand how we, the group got to where it's at. So originally we were, this was about 2011. We were trying to coordinate our 25th year anniversary, not anniversary, 25th year reunion. And we had all just recently got on Facebook and connected with each other's friends, but we didn't have a way to coordinate. So we had set up a little page. Um, I think their Facebook was doing it at the time and it got going and we were able to coordinate and do some things. And so what happened was some students from the years that followed like 80, 89, 90 said, hey, can we join your, your Facebook page? Cause we'd like to coordinate too. But then it got kind of confusing because we were the class of 87 or 88 and they were the class of that. And so that's where the group, the idea of just a broader group for all alumni came up together and then allowing the various people to connect and form their own subgroups. Um, so that's the way we kind of have developed it over time is like a starting point. Um, so like, for instance, if you just come to the group and you go to the people that are in there and then search, you may be able to find a couple of classmates and then you guys can coordinate. Um, another useful way we do it, used it was um, actually Rika talked about doing the fires. Um, it became a, a, a central point where everybody could post either if they had questions or wanted to contribute or help, or if you had a concern, like the, the it became useful to develop that. Um, where I'd say going forward is a place where, like the alumni activities, the, um, we can coordinate, bring people in. Um, and there may be a lot of alumni out there who aren't yet in the group or even involved in alumni being able to highlight the alumni activities, um, either through the promotional videos or testimonials or things like that. Um, so I see it as a way, as a platform to bring people who aren't currently connected to the alumni back in and then drive them towards RICA and, and the activities they're doing. Awesome, thank you so much for doing that. And I just wanna highlight, Theodore is so cool and he he's a photographer. He and I are both photographers. He does not love to be in front of the camera. Neither do I. But he he is a case of an alumni who saw a need and said, I'm going to step in and do this and take care of this need. And I know there's so many more of you out there who are seeing needs um, for our school and our future. And and you're seeing a talent that you have. He's he he is great at organizing and, and keeping things and keep keeping track of things. And he's also asked for a group of moderators to join in with him. So um, you know, it's a great group. There's no politics. There's not a lot of fighting. It's just Rio Memories is is a really fabulous place to get involved. So I really invite you guys to join there. And. Um, I'm going to post up another poll really quick because I want to hear from you guys. Let's see, number six. And Connie, tell us a little bit about where you lived and you can launch this question. So how far did you live from Rio while you're here as a student? So I was actually from, we had just moved to um, Lower Lake. So, you know, what that's like an hour and a half away. Um, and in that area, we just had a, a K-8 Adventist school and my parents were really, really wanted me to attend uh, an Adventist school. And so that's how I came to Rio. But um, yeah, let's see how far away you guys were. If you're further than that, if you're in Northern California or Southern. So let's see where everybody was when you're here at Rio. Okay, thank you. 
Um, in just a second, we're going to open it up. This is a town hall meeting and we want to hear from you. We've, we've received a lot of answers from you for the survey. So if you have filled that out already, I really appreciate it. We're still tabulating all of your results and Vic, um, Mr. Anderson has read through them. I've read through them. Um, we're really reading every person's insight. And a lot of you have so many ideas and such great testimonies in your time at Rio. And this is a time in the show where I tell you that we need your help. We really want you to be a part of this as we grow into our future. And this doesn't mean just giving money, writing a check, although I will take your checks. Please make your check out soon and send it over to us. But we would love to have volunteers on campus. If your class wanted to organize something and do a project, help restore something on campus. Like Mr. Anderson said, we have a lot of projects that need to be done as the facilities are getting older. Um, a lot of you have led successful careers already. We'd love to set up some kind of mentor or career advice program, mentorships for our students who are still trying to figure out what they wanna do with their lives. You can submit a life update as we continue to put out publications and update each other about what's going on. Um, just email alumni at riolindo.org with what's happening. Send a picture too. People love pictures. Send us your kids, send us your dogs. Um, start or share a Facebook group with your classmates. This is something that a lot of you have been doing. I saw a lot of, there's a class of 76 on here, class of 69, class of 74, 82. A lot of you already have groups. If you have a group, could you go ahead and email me that group so I can join in and just see how you guys are doing. And um, I'd love to share some more information with you on your groups. I promise I won't be annoying or tell me if I am. And then come for a visit. I think I saw a comment on our Facebook the other day. Um, an alumni was trying to get in, but was deterred by the gate. Um, you are welcome to come visit. Just give us a call. Um, there is a little push box button in front of the gate. Even better, uh, make an appointment with us in, in advance. I'd love to tour you around or uh, Kevin or Vic. would love you to, to walk around and just see what's happening here at Rio. Um, help us recruit, recommend families to Rio in your area. You are a living proof. You are already a success story of what Rio has done. And we need recruiters. I'm not the recruiter. You guys are the recruiter. And then connect with alumni. This is something that I've been praying for is those connectors. Um, a few of you have already reached out to me on email and said that you're, you already have these ideas swirling. You're people that you know that have kind of fallen by the wayside. I would love for you to help connect with them and bring them back in and get them involved again. And then of course, we need a lot of financial support. 2020 hit us so hard. We are running ragged right now. We're gonna make it through this, but we need, we're going to be launching a lot of giving campaigns later on this year and throughout next year that you'll be seeing um, on our Facebook and our website and our email list. We will be doing a lot of fundraising campaigns um, because we have a lot of financial need right now. Um, but I think the biggest thing that you need to know is when you're giving to us, this is not a money pit. We are changing lives and we're still providing a valuable service, a lifelong service for our students who are still coming to school here, even during distance learning. We have a hundred families who have decided to stay with us at a boarding academy in the time of COVID. And right now we're trying to get ready to open for second, second semester. I think we're working with our county and we hope that we will be able to open Although we know with all things, it's hard to plan and you never know what's going to happen. And then finally, the last thing that you can do for Rio and for us as a staff is pray for us. If you are still a person who believes in God or has a prayer life or is connected to God, um, just lift us up in your prayers. Um, we have a lot of students who they're doing okay. They're making it right now um, and they could use your prayers too. So we appreciate all you prayer warriors. Um, thinking of us in your time with God. And I wanted to show you, <laughs> these, these are some alumni who are on our staff. <laughs> Becky is giving me the dirty look right now because I put her first. These, these alumni have felt the call of God to come back and serve um, students for years to come. Albert Miller is our superintendent. I put him up there. I love his hair from when he was a senior in high school. So these are people that, are, that have come back and maybe some of you might feel called to come back and serve at Rio too. Um, 
So I want to open it up for questions and we'll take questions both on Facebook and on our chat here on the right. If you have something specific that you are wondering about, you're curious about, there's something on your heart that you wanted to share, um, just put that in the chat and we'll see if we can address it. So I'll give you a moment and I'm going to put up another poll question while we're waiting for that. All right, none of you guys have questions. How is that possible? <laughs> um, I think a lot of the questions I had in the survey, um, there it was, it was kind of trending in the 60s. There were a lot of people who didn't know what was going on at Rio these days. So that's a lot of the purpose that this video is going to serve. Um, Thank you, Jerry, for inviting me to the 76ers group. I am in there. Karen went Whiteman Bunch, she did invite me. I'm I'm there. So thank you for inviting me. Thanks for letting me be a part of your groups. Um, do we have any questions from the Facebook, Becky? Um, no, so oh yeah, she said to remind you that our front gate was built by our metals class, our industrial artists at work. It's a really beautiful gate. Let me go back to it. There, yes, they welded all of that together. Um, and then the bottom is a wood paneling. It's it's quite beautiful. There's It's completely custom done. Albert was a freshman my senior year and Jerry graduated with his brother, Bill. And Jerry was also caught smooching someone in the, maybe I should just leave it at that. <laughs> She's put on social for something. You can scroll up to read her story later. Well, if you guys don't have any questions for us, I want to put this email one more time. Alumni at riolindo.org. If you'd like to get in touch, um, please send me any. Let me see if I can move this. It's hard to see it because that little thing has popped up. Okay, alumni at riolindo.org. Send me any questions or ideas or things that you need to stay in touch. And I'm looking for connectors right now. If you're a person who loves to connect with other alumni or have a Facebook group, we'd love to have that. Glenda Meadows has a suggestion. And Glenda, you're from 72, I think. What about a list of projects that we as classes could adopt as your projects? I love that idea. What a great idea. Um, Glenda, let's do it. Um, we'll brainstorm together and see if we can come up with a list of things that maybe your class could sponsor or even come on campus and help do yourself. If you, I know some people are starting to get into the age of retirement. Um, we'd love to have you back on campus. We have some space to park some RVs. We have a little Airbnb space that I want to build out to be like a little hangout area for alumni to come safely and be able to stay and spend a nice weekend in beautiful Sonoma Valley. So let me know if you'd like to come. And um, thanks for Norm to Norm for being here too. He's our business manager. I wanted you guys to say hi to him. He's class of 88. You wanna say hi, Norm? Sure. <laughs> can't, beat, can't beat that awesome class of 88. <laughs> All right. Hard to believe. And, and then uh, it's interesting to see, uh, yeah, being a parent this year of our youngest daughter, uh, our second, second generation graduate for Rio. So pretty amazing. Yeah. So let's keep in touch. I'm, I'm not feeling like we're having a lot of questions right now. You guys are a quiet group. So thank you so much for being involved and um, email me alumni at riolindo.org or call us at the front desk 707-431-5100. And we're just gonna close with prayer. So I'm gonna see if, um, Alan, would you like to offer a prayer to close? Yes, that would be great. Father, we thank you again for this great time of uh, reuniting again here this evening. Thank you for the way that you have led Rio in the past and may that give us 
encouragement as we uh, walk into the future with you together. Uh, please bless all of our alumni, all of our faculty and staff uh, be with us as we continue our uh, mission and our walk with you individually and as a group and uh, continue to bless Rio is our prayer in Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here and we hope you have just a great evening and a happy holiday season. Rika, one, yes. I do have a question. Are oh, we yeah. planning to have more of these in the future? Updates. Do you, do you want to? <laughs> Is this yeah. a good idea? <laughs> This is a, a big old experiment. Um, I would love to do something like this for alumni weekend, for sure. Um, whether we're in person or virtual, because that would make so many more people be able to connect and, and um, unite together. Um, if, we, if we need to have more State of Rio addresses, sure, let's do it. I mean, now we minimum two times a year. All right, Curtis. Thank you so much for being here. And thanks for talking to me this week, Curtis. That was such a good conversation we had. Um, yeah, if we, if we, if you guys felt like this was a valuable use of time and this kind of kept you knowledgeable, I like this whole, a whole lot more than making a magazine, but I'll still make the magazine for you if you find that that's valuable. We just wanna make sure that we're putting the energy and time and resources into something that you're going to read, your, that it's gonna be valuable to your alumni. Um, so that's why, that survey was so valuable. Um, your feedback is super valuable um, to us as we as we move forward in, in the future. Okay. Is alumni, alumni weekend. Vic, tell <laughs> us about alumni weekend. <laughs> um, the question that cannot be answered. Um, we are hoping um, and praying that we will be able to have a regular alumni weekend this year. Um, you know, right now, we can't um, really open our dorms. We have a few students here who, um, who need to be here for various reasons. But um, we're hoping to be able to open the school um, for students in January. And we're hoping that by March, um, we will be able to have anybody who wants to come back for alumni weekend back. Um, that's our goal. Uh, Sonoma County has been very slow at, at moving out of the purple tier. So we're still the most restrictive that you can be in California right now. And so we just have to wait. I'm guessing that toward uh, the middle to the end of January, we'll be able to have a much better idea um, if we cannot meet on campus, we will certainly assist in helping set up virtual uh, meetings, or, or maybe I can talk Norman to fly us all over to Hawaii, and we'll just have an alumni weekend over there. Or maybe we'll just be all in heaven before uh, <laughs> yes. it happens. Um, we will we will keep you guys updated. We're going to stay in communication with you. Whatever happens, we are going to meet together either virtually or in person in April. And we're celebrating all of the honor years from both last year and this year since we kind of missed out on your time. Um, another, I wanted to add in for alumni reunions. I saw I saw a similar suggestion several times. And for alumni weekend, I don't want it to be just about honor classes anymore. I'd love to invite anyone who's ever attended Rio. So all of the alumni association, you guys are always welcome to come anytime. We'll still have special class events for those honor years, but anyone is welcome to, to come during that time. Absolutely. All right, I, do we have any other questions from the Facebook? No, all right. Have a great evening, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for our panelists for taking some time out of their lives to be here from wherever you're at. Oh, Curtis, Curtis has a quick question before I shut this down. Curtis. Let's see, I think he's getting his thoughts together. Come on, Curtis. Um, let's see, Curtis, I'm not sure how I can make you to, let's see, Curtis.
Curtis, you should be able to talk. Can you hear? Yeah, how's that? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Hey, when you guys were talking about the, the um, no off-campus work, ha has there been any research done at all? And why is there not any off-campus work besides COVID? Yeah, so we, we have looked at, at how we can do that. California labor laws have changed so dramatically um, over the last 40 years that it's difficult to get most of our kids working uh, very much at all. Um, most businesses will want them between the hours of say eight o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the evening. And uh, most of our students can't start working until sometime after four. Um, in other words, most of them can't work during the school day. Um, we could make an, a, a way around most of those regulations is to make work a part of the curriculum. And um, we have looked at that. We, we haven't ruled it out, but there's a lot of regulatory hoops that we have to jump through in order to make that happen. So um, um, it's not impossible, but it's a whole lot more difficult than it used to be. Um, and that's, that's basically where we are. We, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to continue to explore um, options for our students to have um, both job experience and the ability to pay off part of their tuition. Hmm, okay. I, but, I'm just brainstorming, that's all. Yeah, no, good, good, good question. And, and we, have, we have looked at it. It's just not, it's not like the good old days when you could load um, 30 kids up into a bus and take them down to, to Harris Pine and put them to work. Um, it's, it's a lot more difficult than that. How about in regards to working like at pizza places or like Sonic or, you know, um, I, I don't know. I, I know over the years, the Adventist community has, you know, lacks in their beliefs on certain things. I mean, heck, if Pacific Union College could sell a heck of a lot of property through the wineries, well, can't the students work in a, in a winery setting of some capacity or another? Yeah, and, and it's interesting, especially our students that are 18 um, often have had certain jobs off campus, and, and, and we allow that. Um, you know, but again, it's it's difficult until they turn 18 for them to be able to work, certainly during the day. And then in the evening, um, I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of them don't want to work because that's when we have sports and other social activities when, when they don't want to be working. So again, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but um, it's, it's, it's difficult. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Curtis. All right. No, thank you. <laughs> all right. I think I'm going to close out this meeting. Thank you all for coming again. And um, email if you think of anything else later that just comes to mind. Take care. Hey, thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Rika. <laughs> Bye.